O Hecate Chthonio, goddess of the earth and the underworld, you who dwell deep in sacred places, guide us through the mysteries of life and death. Help us embrace transformation and stand strong upon the earth as we journey through the shadows. Hecate Nathron Pratonia, mistress of the dead, guardian of the souls who pass from this life, watch over the spirits of our ancestors. Guide them with compassion to their resting place and grant us your wisdom as we honor those who came before. O Hecate Bremo, the terrifying, fierce protector, in your powerful presence, we find strength to face our fears. Shield us with your mighty force. Help us overcome the trials that lie ahead and lead us through the darkness to the light of transformation. Hail Hecate, keeper of the keys to the underworld. In your guidance, we trust. Your power, we find courage. And in your protection, we walk with faith and strength. Hi, welcome to Couple and Cards. Today we are talking about Hecate as guardian to the underworld. Thank you for joining me. Grab your tea. I've got some uh, reviews for here today. And what we're focusing on uh, today, the 18th, um, we are focusing on Hecate and how she relates to the underworld and a couple, or at least three, of the epitaphs that are in my deck. Uh, the Crossroads Oracle um, related to this particular uh, area. So pull up a chair, sit down, and let's have a chat. Okay, so welcome back to our series on Who is Hecate? Insights from the Epitaphs. Um, in this episode, like I said, we're going to be focusing on the Guardian of the Underworld aspect. Um, and we're going to look at how Hecate is depicted as a goddess of magic and liminality, and also a, how she holds a deep connection to the underworld, um, where in that connection she works as a uh, both a protector and a guide for the souls for those who have passed. Um, we're going to be looking at Hecate Chthonia. So that's this one. There's this card. And we're going to look at Neriton Praetanian. It's a tongue twister if there ever was one. And we're going to look at Bremo, uh, which is the terrifying. Um, Bremo is, of course, the, the name that we chose for the Sanctuary of Hecate Bremo. So last week, we talked about um, Hecate in her role as a light breaker. Um, we talked about how uh, she guides us through uh, the areas, helps us find answers to her questions at the crossroads and that sort of thing. And today we're going to shift that focus and then move into the underworld. So I'm going to start with <clears throat> Chthonia. And I've added the, I'll add them in the description, the pronunciations for this. Um, so this is uh, Chthonia. So there's that. So, Chthonia, it means of the earth and the underworld. So, when we think about Hecate in this, uh, this aspect, it, it's her deep connection to the earth and that, that robust, that feeling of home and, and earthiness, that darkness that's associated with that particular word. Um, she is not only the goddess of that earthen area, but also, you know, she's a goddess of other areas of lightness and the, the journey between light and dark, that new lumial space between them. Um, she's called upon here when we think about her in a ritual of transformation, right, of death and rebirth. Um, so let's say if you were going to work with her, you may look with her, work with her in this aspect um, in burial rites, right? Or maybe as someone who's passing, if you were going to be working with her as a death doula um, or something of that nature, um, you would probably call, call upon her in her Cadonia aspect um, to help bring understanding and comfort in that time. A way to connect with her 
in this particular aspect would be with grounding rituals. So you want to think about, you know, your incense and your candles that are focused on that earthiness, that um, connection to that darker side of things. Um, when we look at this, we're talking about magic, right? We're talking about that connection to the magical darkness that is there. Now this, I'm, I'm not necessarily a person who believes in um, black magic versus white magic. I think there's just magic, right? But when we think about the darker side of things, what we're talking about is those things that have been typically characterized as being dark. So it would be um, sadness or mourning or um, unhappiness or death or loss. Those are the kind of things that we're referring to when we talk about this particular aspect. We're also talking about things that are related to the earth. So it may not necessarily be a sad thing, but more something related to that earthen quality, the grounding force that you need to have really any magical, uh, any magical powers whatsoever. Um, so those are the aspects that you would look at and the types of keywords that you would work with when dealing with Chthonia. So the next one we're going to look at and this one's a little more tricky to pronounce, especially with my southern drawl. Um, this is Narathon, Narathon Pretenin. So Narathon Pretenin. So I'm gonna just hold that up for you so you can get a look at it. I'm not getting my preview, so hopefully you're able to see that. And this tra basically translates to Mistress of the Dead. So it's very familiar or very similar to Chthonia in that same earthen burial, funerary type environment and this is more associated with the actual act of death the afterlife and that authority over it so as we know from many of the other stories and things that are related to her role as psychopomp um, is that she guides the souls between the realm of the living and the dead and we can see this played out really um in the uh in the myth of Persephone, right? So when Persephone leaves and she goes into the other world, the earth goes into its sleeping phase, right? It's when we get that fall and winter time. And then when she comes back, everything comes back into spring and full, full bloom and life. So that is her being that, that escort or her ability to move between that realm, bringing people in and out, or the undead, I should say, bringing in and out between um, the restless dead between in and out i said undead like we're talking about zombies back up that's not what we're talking about okay um so here we're talking about her providing safe passage her providing um a way for those souls to reach where they need to go from the realm of the living into the realm of the dead um and in the readings and some of the things i found is that hecate was associated with funerary rites in ancient greece um, with her standing at the gates, being there, you know, with her keys ready to unlock and carry those uh, those souls onto their next their next place, she was the one there to do that guiding and do that ex that uh, escorting. Just her presence there is bringing comfort to the living. Like some may you set up a a uh, ancestor altar. And on your ancestor altar, you may want to have, you know, perhaps a pomegranate as a nod to, you know, Persephone. Um, and then a statue or a representation of the goddess Hecate. Um, an example might be something like this, right? So this is, would be a, a type of altar or a type of uh, image that you might want to put up for with her. So when we're thinking about working with her, um, a, a great way to work with this particular aspect because she is that luminal God. She's that God, that communicator between the living and the dead is with ancestor work. So we talked about an ancestor altar, but if you are someone who likes to communicate or try and, and reach out and communicate with the dead, would it be a scrying mirror or maybe with a scrying ball um, or perhaps even with a, a spirit board? Um, you could certainly call upon this aspect of Hecate to help get that information or connect or honor the spirits of those who have passed on. Um, invoking Hecate as a guide for their souls can be a powerful way to connect with this avatar. So let's say that you've had someone in your family pass, right? And you want to have that send off for them. So maybe you're not participating in a traditional funeral, or maybe you are, and you want to invoke her as being that person to help guide that spirit along, right? 
Um, so that would be how to connect with this phone. And I'll share the card one more time. All right. And the final one that we're going to work on today is uh, Hecate Bremo. So here's the Bremo. Just hold that steady for you for a minute. Okay. Now, her, the, the definition of this one is terrifying, right? The fiery one, the angry one. Right? That's what Bremo represents. And what I chose for my keywords in this card was fierce, fiery, and mother, right? So what I like to think about this aspect of Hecate is I think about her as that mom there, right? She is that, that person there who's ready to don't mess with her babies. She is there to take care of everything around her and take care of those things that need to be taken care of. She is the mother of control. She is the mother of doing things. Um, and in her Bremo aspect, she is like a force to be reckoned with. Um, she is the embodiment of power. Uh, she is the, uh, the protector in time of danger. And when, you're, when you think you might be afraid, this is who you would call her. Um, I totally think of her uh, as that bear standing in front of her cubs, ready to defend them at all costs. Um, Bremo is associated with perhaps rites of initiation, where someone has to confront their fears or they have to confront challenges. Um, I've found, that, frankly, working with her can be very intense, working with this particular aspect. You have to be ready to surrender, right? You have to be ready to surrender control and let her be in charge of the moment. Um, you'll feel that presence take over. For me, it's been awe-inspiring, really. Now, some ways that you want to work with her um, is if you're in a situation where maybe you need a little bit of encouragement, um, maybe you need to have something to make you a little more positive. You know, maybe you might want to bless the candle in her name, light some incense, and then try and invoke that feeling that she would give you, that, that power feeling, right? So what you're doing is you're calling on her to be protective. She's that force behind you, helping you up and going forward so that you can stand on your own two feet. Some of the ways that you may want to do this, um, as we mentioned with the candles, you can also look at meditation. Um, I am a big proponent of meditation. I think it's fabulous. Um, being neurodivergent um, and someone who was diagnosed at a, probably around age 35 um, as having bipolar disorder, um, I have a lot of energy and I am a go, go, go kind of person. Um, if I'm not doing something, there's something definitely wrong. I never take naps. I'm not someone who slows down. I'm constantly working on something. Um, so if I am looking for um, a way to connect with her, I try to find a way to connect in that element so that I'm not um, without or doing things that are slow like I don't meditate that way I found that through Buddhism I'm able to do mindful meditation that's brought up by um, uh, the uh, Zen Zen master uh, Thich Nhat Hanh um, and that's where you I'm driving because I know I'm driving I'm washing the dishes because I'm washing the dishes I feel the dish between my hands I'm sweeping the floor I'm sweeping the floor I feel it and I'm doing it so I'm not sitting in a quiet spot meditating. It's more of a mindfulness. I'm being present in the exact moment. So working with Bremo, you can do that the same way, right? You can go for a walk. You can set your apples out, right? If you're feeding the, the undead or feeding the spirits of the, of the restless dead, you're going to um, do that in a mindful way. I'm gonna be present. I'm gonna feel my feet if they touch the ground. Um, and sometimes that's a little easier when you talk about connecting with spirits, um, especially as it relates to meditation. So we're going to just reflect on all three of these really quick. So we're going to talk about, again, Chthonia, right? Chthonia, her aspects here, earthen, underworld, darkness. Um, and then we're going to try to say this one again, <laughs> Hecate, um, Hecate, Nefarian, Pretana. Um, I'm probably horribly saying that wrong, and you can certainly correct me in the comments. Um, and, th and then we're going to look at Bremo. And again, Bremo is that mama bear. She is the one in charge of everything. Um, through these titles, through each one of these epithets, 
um, we can see Hecate as her, it's her role as a guardian to the underworld, a guide for souls, a source of transformation and protection. So as we reflect on these, um, we can understand her as a goddess that helps us navigate through the more difficult times of our life, right? When there's the change, loss, right? Loss. I'm actually mourning a little bit of loss the, this week myself. I've had some changes in my personal life that have made it where things are not going exactly as planned. So I'm feeling that same need for guidance and strength and compassion. So as you're going through your week, Right? You can certainly call upon that prayer that I recited at the beginning of our call. I'm going to put that right in the uh, right in our, our chat box. Um, you can certainly call on that. But as you move forward, think about ways where you can honor these uh, these type or these aspects in your own practice. Right? How can you bring in Brahma as to what you work on? Perhaps you you work primarily with um, Saltiera. Right? How can you bring in this aspect? Think about that. Um, find a way to maybe bring in ancestor work. You know, we're getting closer to the end of the month. As Samhain rolls, rolls around, we're going to see the veil thinning. You know, there will be a lot more uh, opportunities con to connect with those who have passed. So maybe that's a way we could work with this. Um, any way you work with it, whether it is those connections, confronting your personal fears, embracing some transformation, which is what I'm really going through this week, um, Hecate is there for you to help inspire you through these and many of our other aspects. So consider setting up a space to honor her in these forms this week. Um, maybe ask for her guidance and protection, maybe her wisdom, as you look exploring these additional aspects of the goddess. So that is our story or our presentation for this week. Um, next week, we are going to be focusing on Hecate as a protective force. We're gonna pull up three more of our cards to share. Um, let me give you another look at those. And again, these are in the uh, Crossroads Oracle. This is an oracle deck that I created as part of my Torchbearer uh, project for the Covenant of Hecate. Um, I'm currently um, starting a new Torchbearer course actually at the beginning of November to help train future Torchbearers. Um, and that is available for anyone who is currently a member of the Covenant of Hecate and has been an active member for six months. Um, you're welcome to join. You'll find this information in, on the uh, Covenant of Hecate website if you're interested. If you're looking for these cards, they're available on my website at uh, hecatebremo.org. Um, and that is going to be our story for today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And I hope that you have a glorious day today and a wonderful weekend.